Good evening. If you're watching at home, we're glad to have you as a part of prayer meeting tonight. We've got a great looking crowd here uh, on a stormy Wednesday afternoon uh, here at the Harrisville Baptist Church. We're glad you've tuned in if you're watching along uh, either live with us or later on after the fact. We're going to start our time of prayer meeting out tonight with a word of prayer. So go to the Lord with me. Father God, we thank you today, Lord, for all that you're doing. Father, Lord, we thank you for this, this uh, even this, this storm that just came through. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you, you are not only in control over it, but, Father, you are, uh, you are using it, Father, to, to do what, what, you, uh, what you have purposed for it to do, just as you do with all the things that go on in our lives. Father, we praise you, Father, that you are working. And, Lord, we ask you to continue to work in us and on us and work through us, Father, as well, as we open our hearts up to be yours and to serve you and glorify you in every way. We thank you tonight you've brought us here together for prayer meeting, Father. We look forward to the opportunity to pray with one another uh, for all those that you'll put on our heart. And, Father, all those that we, we, we can celebrate healing and good things happening for. But Father, also all those that we'll pray for that are struggling. We're going to ask your will for them. So, Father, help us to do that and to seek it, not just with our words, but, Father, with our very hearts for everyone, including ourselves, because your will is good and your will is perfect and your will is right. Father, it's good for us. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to, over these last several weeks to, to uh, in our Sunday morning worship services, to preach and to, and to hear preaching on, on prayer. Father, I pray that you are growing us in our prayers. And Father, in every way we approach it, every way we, we participate in prayer, everything that we think about prayer, Father, don't let us rest on some uh, long-standing thought or long-standing understanding of prayer. But, Father, make it fresh and new in our lives each and every time that we get to speak to you and hear from you in prayer. So, Father God, tonight as we look back over that sermon series, as, as you continue to teach us more about prayer, would you work in our hearts? And, Father, as, uh, as, as we know, Lord, we, uh, we know that, that when we align what we ask for with your will, you do what we ask for. Father, help us to be about your will, Lord, in all that we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we, uh, we had a State of the Church service uh, and uh, got to share some good news on a lot of different fronts, a lot of things that have happened over the last 12 months here. Uh, we did that Sunday evening, so that, uh, that took us out of the opportunity to, or had to maybe bump the opportunity to look back over our most recent sermon series that we just completed called Praying for You. And so we're going to do that tonight in our time of Bible study and, and just uh, try to uh, rehearse and remember some of the things that the Lord may have taught you, challenged you with, um, impressed upon you, whatever he may have done, however he's working in your heart uh, over those last four sermons, those last four Sunday mornings. Um, praying for you, the, the sermon series, remember we, we introduced it to you by talking about how so often that's a phrase we bat around that we kind of dole out there pretty liberally. You know, somebody will say something's going on and we'll say, hey, I'll pray for you or hey, I'm praying for you or we put it in our text messages, we put it in our posts online and things like that, especially when people post news of all kinds. We'll even use emojis for it, you know, and, and, and put the little praying hands emoji up. Uh, that has found its way into emoji culture and is certainly heavily in use. And sometimes people don't even say anything. They just put that emoji, which we have come to understand means that I'm praying for you, right? But we talked about, you know, when we are actually praying for people, that it's important if we're praying to the God who gave us Scripture, who exposed and, and revealed himself uh, through his word, that if we're going to pray to him, then we should probably have our prayers line up with what he's taught us about how to pray. That kind of would make some sense, right? It'd be a good way to go about things. He, he designed it. He, he instituted it. He has gifted us with the opportunity to be a part of prayer. So why would we do it any other way than his? Well, I think that's a, that sounds like a rhetorical question, but let me give a couple of answers to that. Uh, I think sometimes we do it differently than the way Scripture teaches because maybe that's the way we've always done it, right? Maybe that's the way we've been exposed or the way we've thought about prayer. Um, maybe that's the way we're comfortable doing it. Uh, maybe that's the way um, that we think is right and we just never have really taken much time to look into Scripture to see if it's any different. There's a lot of reasons why we might find ourselves in a moment or for a season or even for a lifetime Praying in a way that may be a little different or maybe incomplete compared to the way Scripture teaches us about prayer. Rest assured that Scripture teaches us to pray. Uh, not only does Scripture give us examples of people throughout the history of Scripture 
who were and did pray, who were praying for things and for people and for God to move and praying his glory and even praising and worshiping him, worshiping him in prayer. Um, man, there's all kinds of people who are praying in Scripture, but even uh, as, we, as we see them and as we are taught about prayer, we, we can learn a whole lot more about what God actually has for us in this action, in this, this dialogue, in this communication, this gift that's called prayer. Um, so often in churches, and we were talking about this at, a, at an association meeting uh, the other night, so often prayer becomes kind of some other things in our worship services, in our meetings, things like that. A lot of times prayer becomes the, uh, the punctuation on what we're doing, right? We pray to open up, we pray to close, and then we kind of do our thing in between, whatever that may be. Um, sometimes, and I, I had a seminary professor that, that just could not stand this, and I think, uh, I think I, after several of his rants over the few years I was doing seminary courses, uh, I think I kind of started to agree with him. So often, prayer is used as transition time in a worship service. Have you ever thought about that? Uh, that, that may be, a, that may be a, a ministry trick, so to speak. Um, but what happens most of the time when we're in a service together, especially in a formal worship service type of atmosphere, and someone is leading a prayer? What happens with the congregation most of the time? What do you do? Listen. Okay, listen's good, but what do you do with your body? Bow your head, Bow your head and some of us you close your eyes, right? Uh, in fact, sometimes, like invitations, a lot of times you hear people say, with every head bowed and every eye closed. Well, well, traditionally, I don't think really intentionally, I think it just kind of happens this way. Um, when those heads are bowed and those eyes are closed, we, we do set changes, right? People move around. They go from one thing to the next, and we have a prayer. In it, and it really becomes a transition. Now, uh, since COVID and every church large and small had to find out a way to stream or to put their services online in some way back when we couldn't meet and then some were doing it before that and still are and some have just kept on like we have uh, during this time since COVID uh, to be able to reach more people and you never know who might be part of your services online. Well, that kind of, you know, that prayer is transition kind of gets exposed when the video camera's on because you know what's true about a video camera? It doesn't bow its head nor close its eyes. Right. And so, it, you know, whereas in the sanctuary, you're sitting there and you bow your heads, close your eyes, and then you look up and the next person's up there or the next people are up there. Right. And you probably don't even think anything of it um, on the screen. Man, you see all that. Right. If you if you've watched a service, ours or anybody else's, you know, that 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 prayer's transition doesn't work. I, that professor didn't like it because and this is where I started to agree with him. It, it cheapened what the prayer was. Right. Um, I don't, again, I don't think anybody said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make prayer not important. We're just going to use it as a ruse to get them to close their eyes so we can do our thing and make it look professional. I don't think anybody ever said that. I don't think everybody, anybody ever intended it, but I can tell you it happens <laughs> all the time, right? All the time. There's movement and things like that during prayer. Uh, a lot of times when we bow our heads, close our eyes, People feel more comfortable to get up and go to the bathroom, right? Um, and, and they feel like they're not distracting. And maybe they're not. And that's fine. But, but again, this professor was like, man, I, I, you know, prayers transition. Don't do it. Don't do it. And, and, you know, and this was a worship leadership class, one of the classes he taught us. And he said, man, don't ever do that. Let prayer be what prayer is. It's an important time for the people that are taking part in it, whether they're the one actually voicing the prayer or whether they're praying uh, you know, on their own with that prayer. And that's, by the way, how we're supposed to do that. When someone's leading a prayer, it's not you know, time for us to kind of, okay, well, we're just kind of going to gather our thoughts and we're going to you know, let them kind of, because again, that goes back to it being punctuation or direction instead of what it is. And that's talking to the living God, right? To talking to the creator who's given us an opportunity to. Um, you know, and, and, and last thing I'll say about that prayer transition and, and kind of some of the things that prayer is in our services, if God were to show up in bodily form, right? Or if Jesus was to appear right here, if he was to walk through that wall as he did in his resurrected body to the disciples, if he was to walk in there, uh, I guarantee you we would not, if I turned to talk to him, 
we would not be doing anything other than focusing on Jesus, right? Well, so why would we do that any different when we're talking to God in prayer? Here again, I don't think we set out to do it that way, but we do. We get accustomed to it. And, and, and so when we talk about not praying the way Scripture tells us and teaches us to pray, it's not like, you know, oh, we don't care about prayer. It's just something that we get programmed into. It's something that we get used to. It's something that, that, that we kind of, you know, just, again, become accustomed to and, and end up not getting the power out of prayer. Well, that has some far-reaching implications, doesn't it? That also means if we're not getting a lot out of it corporately, we may not see as much benefit in it privately, right? Um, and therefore, we end up suffering for lack of prayer in our personal lives, at least potentially. Prayer is too important of a gift from God to do any other way than the way he's called us to do it. Now, we could, we could do years worth of sermons and studies on prayer and not get it all figured out. We had four weeks out of that sermon series that we, that we got to spend on it trying to, to, to hit some important key parts of prayer and, uh, and, and to work through it in that way. And the, the first thing we talked about that Scripture tells us we should pray for everyone is that they be saved and that they grow and live their salvation in their life in the eternal life that, there, that comes from their salvation. That we should pray for salvation for people as much and even more than we pray anything else. And in that first sermon, we, we concluded it with this point saying, pray for the absolute best. Pray for the absolute best. What's the absolute best thing that can happen to us? Some of us are like, man, I could get that boat. Man, I could get that car. I could get that Jeep out of the being rebuilt. Or, you know, whatever. We got all kinds of things that we might think are the absolute best thing that happened to me right now. But salvation is by far, far and away better than any of that. And if we don't believe that, if that's not true for us, we might better check what we're calling our salvation if we're calling anything our salvation. Because if our salvation is not better than everything else in our life, and I mean better than the other best things, it's not biblical salvation. We might have to look and say, hey, are we taking for granted this thing that is huge and treating it like it's less than in any way? And so because it's so big, we need to pray for the absolute best for people. And that is that they would be saved, that they would come into faith in Jesus Christ and therefore be entered into a relationship with God that they also then might live out and not only for them, they, some, someone else that we're praying for, but for ourselves, we should pray for our salvation and for the working out, as Scripture says, of our salvation. We need to pray for the absolute best. That was week one. Week two, we wrapped up by saying, look, we need to pray for people's, uh, their, our sins. You may say, well, wait a minute, if we're praying for salvation, that takes away the sin problem. Yeah, ultimately and eternally, it absolutely does. But I've been saved a long time. Right? I've been saved this year going on 35 years. And I can't count the number of sins that I've committed even though I'm saved in those 35 years. I've been saved for 35, was unsaved for only 12. And, and I don't know, I, again, because I can't count the number of sins from any of those years or all of those years, sin didn't go away in my life. Now the eternal impact of sin absolutely went away when I was 12 years old and I put my faith in Jesus. But the battle of sin in my daily life remains. The battle for sin in your daily life remains. And so that's an object, that's a situation, that's a, that's a thing that we need to pray for with one another and for ourselves. We talked about how important it is to, hey, if, you, if you're going to be able to pray for sins for others, Scripture, that's why Scripture tells us to confess our sins once to another. Not for forgiveness as much as for prayer. As much as for understanding that we're all struggling with the same things. To lift up people for healing. To pray for that miraculous healing that God gives us in sin. Not only eternally in salvation, but daily in our life when we surrender each day and each moment to Him. So we, we said to pray for the miraculous. Don't just pray for, you know, you know oh, let them, let them feel better. Let them have a good day. They're, those are fine prayers and all. 
But pray for the miraculous because the God you're praying to is not just about having a okay days or helping you feel better. He's about changing our lives. He's about defeating uh, under him the, the biggest power in our life, and that's the power of sin in our lives. We should pray for the miraculous. In week three, we came back and we said, look, there's some people that you don't get along with. We've all got them. We all are them for somebody else or somebody else. But even though we think we have enemies, we need to know, first off, what an enemy actually is in, in the Lord's view. And then we should pray for our enemies. And we should pray literally for everyone. No one should be excluded from our prayers. We should pray as, as, as God loves, right? That's part of that sermon as well. But pray for everyone. And so if nothing can disqualify anyone from God's love, then nothing should be able to disqualify anyone from our prayers. We should pray for everyone, especially for those that we disagree with, that treat us badly, that, that we feel are not uh, where they need to be. If, if, we're, if we're believers and we're dealing with people who are not believers and they're acting like non-believers, we should go back to step one and pray for their salvation, right? We should pray, though, for everyone. And then this, just this past Sunday, we were able to wrap up the series uh, looking at how Jesus taught us how to pray. Some of the things that need to be a part of it. Um, and, and of course, that, that counted and that included praying for salvation, <laughs> praying for the miraculous healing of sin, uh, also praying for our enemies. All of that was encompassed or, or you know, was, was covered by the Lord's Prayer, which is a model prayer for us. It's not the prayer we should pray Every time we pray, God desires not rote memorization in our life. God desires intimacy with us, and so we should open our hearts to him. Um, and, but we talked about that we should pray in Jesus' name. Not just by putting, again, punctuation by saying in Jesus' name, amen. We often say that. If not, some of us are like, man, I don't feel like I've finished praying if I don't say that. Or I don't feel like I've prayed right if I don't say that. But we need to pray as Jesus prayed. One of the great things as an example for us that Jesus set was how to pray to his heavenly Father, to our heavenly Father. Not only did he teach us in the Lord's Prayer there, uh, but he also modeled it over and over again in how he would go away uh, by himself, away from the, all the, you know, the, the, the craziness of ministry and all the craziness of life around him. He would go and get alone with his Father and pray. And he calls us to do the same. He calls us to pray the way he prays. But y'all, listen, that's something we have to continue to grow into, right? Uh, I hope I never get to a point where I'm like, good, I'm there. I'm now praying how Jesus prayed. Now I don't have to grow anymore. That would already just, I mean, that, that defeats itself because if I feel that way, I've got haughtiness in my life. I've got pride in my life. And that's not the way Jesus would pray either, you know, at any point. It's a, it's a constant and continual growth in prayer. With that idea of growth in prayer, what about you guys? What did you learn about prayer? What, what, do you, what stood out to you? And maybe you're just hearing the whole thing today. Maybe you were serving in other areas, nursery, all kinds of other things, missed a sermon or two, whatever. What are some things that God's working on in you about how you pray? I think one of the things for me that I learned a few weeks ago, or I grasped a few weeks ago, was that we should pray for the salvation of the lost. Mm. That should be our first thing in our prayer. And it's hard for me to get in the habit of my breaking my old routine, saying my thanks and forgiveness, right. instead of asking for the salvation and leadership to lead others first. Right. So, I think that I think that's something God honors, right? When 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 we, when we are willing to put forth that effort to try and to follow Him, I think that's good. But yeah, you told us to pray for those that hate us. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I guess I just wasn't thinking about that. You know? <laughs> yeah, they're on their own, right? <laughs> they they want my prayers, so they act better towards me. But that's that's sadly sometimes the way we think, isn't it? Uh, not necessarily the way it should be. What else? And I've learned, and you know, I've talked to you several times about what I was going through. It's got to come from the heart. 
Mm. Yeah. We can pray and pray and pray, and then we get through praying. This is me personally now. Pray and pray, and then my heart says, no. Yeah. We're not that good. Yep. They, uh, they, and I've heard it said in ministry circles that that's that prayer not getting any higher than the ceiling. Right. right? We kind of, it's on its way to where God is. And obviously, this is, this is, you know, oversimplification, but we kind of pull it back in and go, ah, no, no, just kidding. Just, no. <laughs> but you're right. That, it has to come from the heart. Um, and, and as our heart grows, so should our prayer grow. And if our prayer's not growing, we have to ask the question, I think, is my heart growing? If my prayers can't look like Jesus, then does my heart look like Jesus? I think that's a good point, Grady. Right? You right? also told us, you know, when you pray, you don't pray for a performance. You're yeah, not, yeah. You're not doing a performance when you pray. That's right. <clears throat> you know, we had a, and, and, and every church has, you know, people that, that, that pray in particular ways in classes and services, things like that. Uh, we had a deacon at our church in, at First Baptist Fort Walton Beach growing when I was in high school coming up through there. Um, and, uh, and man, he, you know, some of the kids and, and some of the adults even would be like, man, he prays a long time, right? You know, he'd, he'd give the deacon prayer, just kind of like our deacon prayer. Ours was at the, the benediction instead of, uh, you know, more of the invocation, uh, as far as it was at the end of the service instead of the beginning. But, but they were like, man, why does he pray so long? But, but I started listening to him and, uh, he was an African American gentleman and, and, and just, I mean, just had a huge heart for people. And, and he would get up and pray. And I, I tell you, I got as much out of that a lot of times as I got out of the great sermons from, you know, from our pastor who was, uh, you know, it, it was a tremendous pastor for all of us. Um, but, uh, but Brother Cleveland, man, when he got up to pray, you know, there, there was something about it. But people got so focused on the performance of it. And, and kind of like we talked about Sunday, this past Sunday morning, people heard Cleveland pray and they were like, I could never do that. And so they never tried, right? Y'all have heard the story about the elephant and the stake. It's been, I don't know if this is really true. It may just be one of those other illustrations that kind of runs around. But they say that when elephants are babies, they, they can be tied by a stake. And the stake can just be driven into the ground. It's not a huge stake. It's not, you know, it's not concreted in or anything like that. But that, you know, that, that rope or that chain can be put around that baby elephant's foot and tied to that stake and he'll pull against it and pull against it and pull against it can't pull that stake up as a baby well that elephant will become full grown and that same stake will still hold him down because he learned at a very young age i can't do anything about that when that's all my you know when i see that stake and i'm attached to it i'm stuck and so huge powerful full grown adult elephants they say are held in check by itty bitty stakes and some, you know, some chain that they probably could just yank out of the ground if they just really tried, but they won't try. And I think that's true for us of prayer. We, we see certain people or hear certain people or we have a picture in our mind of what good prayer looks like and we don't think we measure up, so we shrivel. And maybe we pray some, maybe we pray sparingly, maybe we pray not at all because, well, I'm not good at it. But when we understand that prayer is not about our performance, right? Um, hopefully, with our closest people in our lives, if we're not great communicators, we don't just never talk to them, right? <laughs> hopefully, we don't say, oh, you know what? I said that last time, and I, I, the words didn't come out right. So I, I, I'm going to still be that, you know, that, that person's husband or that person's wife, but I'm just not going to talk to them anymore. <laughs> I'm just not good at talking to them. They'll, just, they'll figure it out. You know? Maybe they'll have mercy, <laughs> you know? But we do that to God all the time, don't we? <laughs> right? That'd be absurd for us to do in an earthly relationship, but yet we do it with our Heavenly Father all the time. We, we slow up or we take a pass on prayer, either publicly or privately or oftentimes both, because, well, we just don't think we're very good at it. Oh, I can't concentrate. Oh, I, can't, I don't know what to pray for. I don't know how to do it. Because we're too tied up in performance, and that's not what it's supposed to be at all. I hijacked that one. I'm sorry. Y'all are like, y'all are like, you do that every time. I, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Anybody else? Any thoughts on prayer? I, I'll try not to hijack these. Ms. Ethel? Well, um, you know, um, the sermon you had, um, it's been a few Sundays ago, it was about the Lord's Supper. Yeah. And you talked about how the Lord's Supper is not for instance, in my life that I 
had prayed for this person for years, and they just keep doing over and over, hurting you or whatever the case mm. may be. Yeah. So I just finally stopped mm. and stopped praying for this particular person. Well, when he had that sermon that night, that morning, I remember walking out there thinking, you know what? I'm going to start praying for her again. And I got in the car and I told the man, I said, I'm going to start praying for this person again. Mm. You know, and you, it just hit home when you said that. I said, why did I even stop? I, you know, I think, you know, human instincts are you to pray and pray and pray. And, you know, God answers in his own time. Right. But you don't see a response right off the bat. And, right. You know, you finally just let it go, you know, but. You really touched me that morning. That's the, th- thank you for saying that, but that's all glory to God for that. That's the Lord working in, in, in you. And, uh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. We do, though, don't we? We pray, we, pray, we pray for people to change. We don't really pray for the best for them, do we? Red? I think one of the main, main reasons that we should pray, I, I do, uh, to try to build a stronger relationship with God you know, we, our salvation never stops growing. Mm. Uh, it continues to grow and get stronger as you become more aware, you know, of the things that's, that's going on, the things that you are praying for. It's great. You said pray from the heart exactly is what God, he knows what's on your heart. He knows exactly where it's coming from. That's right. Uh, I know I, I was praying one time for my granddaughter who had a wreck. And he got to the, you heard people say, well, you just have groanings. I, I couldn't say anything. I didn't know what to say. But mm. I know he knew what I was trying to say, what was on my heart about her, because I was scared she was going to die. That's right. I mean, it was that, that bad. Yeah. And I think, you know, we pray for different reasons. One is to, great, to gain comfort. Uh, at least I do. That's what I do. That's right. The way I feel. And also pray for others, you know, that uh, that you certainly want them to be, to come to know God. That's right. So to me, that's what I, basically building a stronger relationship with the Lord is what I try to do. And, and that's, a, that's a part of the sermon series we never got to, right? Uh, we're talking about the, you know, what are the personal benefits of prayer? Not that we pray only for the personal benefits, but man, I mean, you know, that uh, we, we could preach a long time about that, couldn't we? Growing closer to God and our relationship with Him. Um, man, it's, it's, it's free therapy, <laughs> right? It's more than just that, but there's part of that. Sometimes we're going through things and we might not can tell another soul, but we can, we can pray it through to the Lord and, and, and just speaking it can, kind of, can have very therapeutic you know, benefits to it. Um, man, you know, and then you add into that the idea that, that we actually get to be a part of God's will being done, right? That when we're praying for His will and He does His will, we didn't make it happen. It's not like, you know, I, I heard somebody talk about, you know, energies and, you know, good vibes and all that type of stuff. That's not the case. That's not the way prayer works. But but that God would invite us into the things that he's doing simply in conversation. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but you know, I mean, y'all know I'm a talker. And so, you know, when I, when I see somebody doing something that interests me, when they'll talk to me about it, that makes me feel good. Right. Well, I mean, nothing's more interesting than what God's doing in the lives of people. And he includes us and invites us into that conversation that is prayer about what all is going on there. Anybody else? I think, realization of that prayer can and does change things. Mm. We were having a discussion in our Sunday school class last Sunday and it, we were talking about some of the things going on in the world and how bad things are getting and whatever. And it's like somebody said, well, I've been talking to somebody about that too, but I'm one person. What can I do? But you think collectively as a group, just like I was meeting here on Wednesday night, collectively if we were praying for these things, as a whole Christian body of Christ, yep. nationwide, yep. what could possibly happen? Absolutely. Well, and, and there's a lot of study about that, right? You know, how does that actually work and things, you know. 
Um, in my first breath, I, I always think, well, you know, we don't change God's mind. But then there's parts of Scripture where people have prayed, and whether it changed God's mind, it may just be the way we perceive it, but, but it's certainly God did something different than what it seemed like he was going to do. And so, you know, I, if that's changing God's mind, well, okay, that's fine. If it's something, if it's us finally praying for and getting in tune with his will, you know, however God wants to let that be known, you know, we, we need to figure out, you know, how to call it, how to talk about it. But there's power, right? I mean, you know, it makes a difference. And even if it didn't, if it just changes us in what we're dealing with, right? If, if as a church, if we were praying diligently together, even on Wednesday nights in prayer meeting, that the people in our community would come to know Christ. If we do that earnestly and honestly and long enough, we're going to start to serve towards that end, right? I mean, that's how prayer is built. It's not just meditation, but there are some of those types of impacts on us when we're when we're constantly praying things, right? So, the, the, you know, that repetition in prayer, Ms. Ethel mentioned it just a minute ago, so we, we, we do, we pray and we want that change to happen right when we pray it, but that's not always what the Lord's doing, right? Sometimes he's going to change that person in his time and sometimes he's going to change that around that person or that situation, right? He's just going to work on us. And either way, if that's what he chooses to do, it's good and it's right. Um, and so I... I think sometimes, this will be the last thing we say to, before we wrap up uh, this part of the, our service tonight, before we actually get into praying for some people. Um, man, sometimes we feel so helpless, don't we? Sometimes we feel like, well, what can I do? Uh, you know, we're, we're, I don't know, we're probably 40 or so people in this room right now. I'm not sure how many are watching at home, but man, you know, it's a big world. What can, what can 40 people do? Right? What can, you know, a hundred people do? What can a thousand people do in the scheme of the whole world when you're talking about billions of people and all the things that are going on? Um, But when we band together in prayer, when we pray corporately as well as privately, and when we have a growing prayer life in both those, you know, on both, both of those fronts and both of those venues, we start to understand that a small group of people praying earnestly, God can use that to do a lot. That's right. That's exactly right. If, that's right. If my people will pray, right, we'll, we'll turn and seek my face. And that's, that's not just preacher talk, right? That's not just pie in the sky thinking. Man, that is, that's scripture, right? And so and as we get ready to go into a time of prayer together, as we share our requests and then spend some time praying for those requests and more, um, don't sell the possibility of what God can do in and through you in prayer short. Put, put more succinctly than that. Don't sell God short in what you're willing to do in prayer. Because God, as always, desires to do immeasurably more than what we're even seeing at at present. He desires to work in and through our prayers and to work in and through us and for others and to also work in and through them for us way more than we're taking him up on. Let's let our our prayers continue to grow. Uh, This sermon series came about, just to be honest with you, around the time I started kind of wrestling in my spirit with what our prayer meetings looked like, you know? Um, And and it's, you know, that was several months before we ever started really talking about it in here. But but you've seen kind of some of the things we've talked about as far as our prayer time. And so there's so much more to pray for. Um, Absolutely praying for people in these categories on our list, 100% is right and biblical, but there's so much more, right? We don't have a list long enough to put everyone who hasn't accepted Christ on, uh, but we can certainly pray for them. Uh, We can pray for the growth of people, for the forgiveness of sins, and for the victory and the miraculous healing of sins. We can pray for our enemies, all these things that came in this sermon series. We can do that anytime we pray, like in the next few minutes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for just a moment. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you have gifted us with prayer. Lord God, as we are here now in the midst of a prayer meeting with several minutes left to, to, to do that very thing, let us not beat around the bush. Let us not stall. Let us not 
mark time. Let us, let us not do anything other than devote ourselves right now, right here, to praying according to your will. Father God, during this last part of our service, the second half of our prayer meeting, Lord, would you inspire our prayers? Would you let us pray truly in Jesus' name? Amen. All right, we'll take a look at your prayer list. Let's do talk about a few folks. And, and, and guys, I know, uh, we've talked about this before, the way that we you know, share prayer requests, you, you don't want to necessarily call somebody by name in a group like this on a broadcast and be like, and I'm pretty sure they're lost and going to hell. Right? That's, just not, that's not necessarily the most tactful way, but you can sure pray uh, when you pray, however the Lord calls you to pray. Uh, but, so all that said, let's take a look at some of the folks on our prayer list. Let me ask you something. We have updates each week, and we spend a decent bit of time um, reading off the updates, right? Oftentimes, the updates are people that you told us about, you know, in person in this meeting the week previous, right? Sometimes they come in, uh, you know, on, on paper throughout the week, especially after Sunday school and things like that. Um, is that the best use of our time together, do you think? We're going to read them. I mean... Right, right. You know. You're talking about, I mean, like you're going to read them off the sheet. You've got them right there. You're going to pray for the people by name, you know, in that section we assign, things like that. Um, I, I, what I don't want to do is, as the leader, you know, of these meetings is, is I don't want to, you know, lull you to sleep, right? I don't want to insult your intelligence. <laughs> and more than that, I don't want to waste our time that we could be spending praying with just me talking and, you know, rehashing information. Um, and, and I guess, you know, this is more just kind of a workshopping idea type of thing. Like, you know, I know that uh, traditionally that's been the way prayer meeting goes, right? You know, we, we talk about who it is and what's going on, and then we ask for other updates, and then we, you know, spend some time in prayer. We've been trying to spend more and more time in prayer. Would it be beneficial to spend the time that we would normally read these bold names to you for you to have time to pray at your tables? I mean, or, or, or to, to spend more time in prayer. Is that something that you guys think would be helpful? And I'm asking here. I'm not. I, I, that's not a rhetorical question. I don't have a necessarily. Well, I'd like to know the people's on here how they're doing. You, you don't want to do all that, like update. Well, no, no, no. I think we definitely want to share the new and the updates. I'm talking about the review oh. of you know that we start off with every time, where we just kind of read through the bold names on the list. No, I think I think definitely. I mean, again, this is my opinion here. I think we'd need to have the time where you can tell us about, you know, what's going on. Certainly, if you want to update somebody that's on here, uh, you know, that's bolded or not, there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, as an official part of it, you know, because we do, we spend sometimes 10 minutes, you know, just, just reading off, you know, the list of, of, of people. I'll tell you what, tonight, we won't do it. Let's see what happens. What yeah. categorizes your to boldness? What, what do you so the changes from the previous week that that that's that's how the prayer list has been been done for that's the way we inherited it and that's the way we've done it since so if it's bold it means that they were either weren't on it last week most of the time um or that there's they, they've been on it but there's been a new development you know in there and guys i'm not trying to be cute or anything i'm just trying i'm, I'm really trying to get to the idea of what's the best use of our prayer meeting time you know What if we just start right here? Who should we add? Who should we lift up in prayer tonight? I have two. Sarah just texted me. Sarah in there. Mm -hmm. And asked that we add Paul Frazier to the prayer list. She said his daughter is a good friend of mine. He is in the hospital. They are trying to determine whether he has cancer. Mm. <clears throat> That's Paul Frazier. Okay. All right. Who else? Clark Rumfeld, Clark and Valerie. They're friends of mine that uh, I thought they were missionaries in Japan, but uh, I got an email from Clark last week, and they are in the Middle East. And emails and messenger is not real safe. So, um, 
said the M word and the CH words are not allowed. Mm -hmm. So just pray for their safety. Um, they're over there as business consultants and also teaching English. Pray for all the missionaries that are doing that, but especially Vicky's friends there. Sometimes better not to even share names because yeah. it does get back sometimes. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're in much more precarious situations than we think Very sometimes. Nice. Okay. Who else can we pray for? Uh, Kevin? Oh, good. Good, good, good. She doing better? Yeah. yeah. That's Margie Wildridge that's been uh, doing some rehab there in a, in a uh, I guess, a nursing home. Uh, well, she, we are glad she's at home and uh, thankful for that. Very good. Okay. Anybody else? We have Linda Zebra on here. Mm -hmm. Sarah put it on there for me. That's my friend, if you recall, she and her husband and his aunt were all in a bad wreck. Yeah. The, the aunt died then, and David months and months and months and months. And right. Linda has been in and out of hospitals ever since that. Finally had a foot removed, but you know, she's still back here. She's one of several whose families we're praying for here uh, under the sympathy column there. Uh, many who have lost loved ones this week. Richard, yes, ma'am? Terry, you your company that Nancy Patrick and Pat Scoliosis And that's the little Angela that comes to church with us quite a bit or, or did before they, they, they moved. But, uh, but sweet, sweet, sweet little girl, but dealing with some things. But hopefully they'll be able to get her, get her literally straightened out with that scoliosis, with that brace. So. Okay. Anybody else? I've got a question. Is the, the family of David and Annie Lord, was that the missionaries that were killed? Yes. Okay. Um, those, you heard about the Haitian missionary couple that was killed. Um, and boy, I'll tell you something, that's, man, uh, talk about terrible situations that our missionaries are in. They do it lovingly, willingly, um, and follow the Lord's will to share the gospel and to minister to people through love um, in all these places. Um, it's not, I mean, it's, it's been within the last dozen years that you wouldn't have thought about that in Haiti. Well, let me say it this way, that that was not nearly a, as big a problem in Haiti as it has become. But a nation that's not very many miles off of U.S. you know soil, um, it's a it's a war zone right now with gangs and lawlessness and and missionaries like the Lloyds are in the crosshairs quite a bit, um, and, and just just like the missionary family Vicky was talking about, you know, the world and certainly the enemy, the, the one who has been given some control over the world and the way people behave. They don't want the gospel spread. They don't want to see people come to salvation. Um, and, and they fight against it violently and, uh, and voraciously. So uh, lift up all the missionaries. Anybody else? I'm sorry, Stacey. That's actually going to be a tag on to, to all of our assignments tonight is to get ready to, if you haven't already been praying for Bible school, to, to do that. Yeah, yeah. Got youth camp coming up not too long after that too. So lots of great things going on this summer, but certainly opportunities that we can pray for our students and our children and all the people that spend a lot of time and a lot of, sometimes a lot of money uh, and a lot of effort, uh, a lot of sleepless nights uh, working with them um, for all kinds of different reasons. All right, if there's no other updates or additions, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and, and divvy up the prayer list here so that we can be praying, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll close out our time together. We've got several minutes left. Uh, take your time and pray for all those that the Lord puts on your heart. Uh, we're going to start over here. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this right here. Let's go this side over here. If y'all will take hospital down to at home, um, if you guys on this side will take the cancer patients, and then if you guys in the middle will take... Uh, the last section there from in the rest homes all the way down to prayer in missions as well. And please, 
add in to pray for Vacation Bible School. Let's, let's focus on Vacation Bible School, and, we'll, and we'll get, as we get closer to youth camp, we'll do the same thing with that. Let's focus in on Vacation Bible School for Jill and Kathy and all the workers that will be working. It takes a ton of people to put on VBS the way that it's done here and, uh, and, and in a lot of places the way it's done. Uh, so lift up those workers, lift up their families, and lift up the children and the families of the children that will be a part of Vacation Bible School coming up in less than two weeks. So uh, let's take time. Uh, I'll start us off, and then let's, uh, let's pray our way out as the Lord leads us. Father God, we thank you again for the opportunity to pray. Would you now let us uh, put, uh, put our actions where our mouths are, Father? Would you help us to, to, to lift up in prayer all those that you put on our hearts, Father, would you let us share our, cons- our, our, our concerns and our burdens, Father, with you in every way, according to your will. And Lord, we ask for your will in it. In Jesus' name. Thank you.